so I'm Billy's boy, right? That's around these circles. I'm, oh, that's Billy's boy. And so, so I've been Billy's boy, uh, probably to Jerry Savelle, I've been Billy's boy. And, uh, but, um, in case you don't know who, who I am besides that, uh, and if you don't know Billy Brim or mom, just Google her. Not now. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I was in baseball. I went that way. And I played football and baseball all the way through college. And then my, I went into coaching. And uh, uh, at, I went into high school, college, and professional. And God blessed me, and I gave him all the glory. And then one day, as I was seeking God and listening to Jerry Savelle tapes, <laughs> not a clue I would be here one day, but uh, my life changed from the inside out. And, and the Lord asked me to seek him, and I began to seek him like champions crave the trophy. And he asked me if I was. And, and so I, be, I, I took the challenge and did. And, and then I heard him in my, in my um, office. And right before practice, he said, Now's the time. And I said, God, how can I preach? All I know how to do is coach. And I do it pretty intently. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty intent. I mean, you have to be when you're coaching. Yeah. Coaching's a little different than teaching. Teaching's good and we need teaching. Yeah. But every once in a while, you need some coaching. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And that coaching is because they love you. <laughs> they want... <laughs> I love you. No. <laughs> I've said that so many times. You don't, doesn't feel like it. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't choke anybody. All right. So I said, Lord, how can I preach? All I know how to do is coach. And he said, did I not help you train champions the last 14 years? And I said, God, I gave you all the glory every time. He said, then I will help you train champions for me because I'm coming back for a champion church. Oh, let's try that again. He said, I'm coming back for a champion church. Not second place church. Not win a few, lose a few church. Are you with me? A glorious church. Moses was bold enough to say, show me your glory, Lord. And if you're not going to be with us, don't leave me here because it's your glory and your presence that separates us from everybody else in the world. It's not your bumper sticker. It's not your car decal. It's not your podcast or your new building. It's not your new logo. It's not all of those things. Those are good. It's the glory that's going to separate us. What an honor it is to, to, to be in, the, in, the, in a, the house of a general and, 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 and what God is showing him about the glory. And, and uh, I've got I've to go through this quickly. I'm going to go fast, okay? Because I've got a lot to give you. How God gave this to me was this. I, he said, I want you to, to dial it in. I was getting ready for an authorities conference with mom and we were doing an authorities conference. And, and so I, I'm, I'm studying and praying and, he, and I heard the Lord say, dial it in. Like you dial in um, like a gun or, or a scope. And I knew what he meant. He wanted me to see something further. Yeah. And so I saw it and just to make it shorter, it was uh, the blood. And I said, God, it was the blood. If there was no bloodshed, we'd have no authority. Thank God for the blood. Yeah. Come on. Okay. And then, so I, I said, man, this is awesome. I dialed it in for the first time. I'm going to dial it in, you know? And so I got excited and I heard dial it in again. I heard it again in my spirit. He wanted, well, that was easy. The, the covenant. If you got to know blood, you got to know covenant. There, there would be no blood if there wasn't a covenant. Yeah. And so I, I dialed it in even further. So here authority was, and here was blood. And then here was covenant. And then he said, dial it in again. And I got it to where it was what it was all about because you gotta understand when you come from a sports background, what is the purpose? Yeah. What is the prize? Yeah. 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 Jesus, for the joy of the prize, endured the cross. Yes. Paul said, run the race to win the prize. You gotta know what motivates you, what inspires you. This is the coaching in me now, right? But what, Paul, uh, what, what did David say he, at Goliath? He goes, what's the winner get? Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. King's daughter, well, is she hot? <laughs> I don't know about that, if he said it. We'll find out in heaven, but you know David. Anyway. <laughs> Badoosh. Okay, so don't, don't laugh. I got time. I got to go. All right. What was I talking about? Glory to God. The prize, yeah. So you got to be focused, right? So... 
uh, I thought I'd hit it and it was souls. Souls was what uh, was on Jesus's mind when he was on. That was the prize. Yes. And I thought, well, that ought to be ours too. And it, it should be. Yes. So we ought to be soul minded, covenant minded, blood minded, all of these things. These are part of it. And I thought I hit it and I preached this service and it, and, and this and it was packed out and there was an astronaut there from NASA and all of these people. Mom was there and I preached it. Souls, it's all. And mom comes up and she goes, there's one more thing. <laughs> and I said, there's one more thing. What is it? She said, the Lord will reveal it to you. <laughs> well, he's busy. Tell me now. <laughs> no, he'll reveal it to you. Week goes by, I'm praying, studying. Mom goes, he revealed it to you yet? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, kind of. Uh, but go ahead and just recap, you know. I'm trying to trick her into giving it to me. And then he showed me what it was. Ow. My eyes have been open. Are y'all ready? What it's all about. Now, now don't get me wrong here. Everything else that we're preaching has a lot of value to it. But I'm trying to get, because it's good for a team to understand what's the purpose. What is this about? And that way you know what the enemy is about. And it makes it clearer to you. Are you with me? And it's a story. That Bible is a book and it is a story. And it's called the story of the glory. It's the story from beginning to end and it's not ended and we're in it and we have a part and it's about the glory. Oh, Jesus. Can y'all not sense this? All right. Are y'all ready for story time? Because we're going to fly. Are you ready? Okay. Paul tells us, here's what we've got to know. Paul tells us who God is. Ephesians 1:17. Put that up there on the board, please. That, everybody look. That the, God of our, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the who? Father. Everybody say it. Father. For some reason, everybody didn't say it. Let's do it again. Father. Who is God? Father. So what's on his business card? Father. Okay, y'all got that down. He is. Okay, now let's go to James 2.1. Let's find out this. My brethren, have not the faith of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is he? What's on his business card? Are y'all getting this? Are y'all with me? I'm making this simple. When it's, when you're coaching, you got to keep it simple. It's got to be basic. When God gives me stuff, it's got to be basic. I need basic math. I don't need trig. Give me basic math. Okay. All right. So God is the father of glory. Jesus is the Lord of glory. The father of glory then creates man and crowns him with glory. Okay. Are y'all seeing the picture of this? This is the whole story and it's the story of glory. Okay. So the father of glory crowns man with glory. Let's go to Psalms eight, four and five. Let's read this. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visited him. Click. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. We know that's Elohim, God, and has crowned him with glory. He crowned him with that. Not with gold. That would be asphalt. Crowned him. Adam didn't even know, it, it, you know how special it was until he lost it, right? Okay. So he crowns him with glory. And then... Man sins and falls short of, okay, Romans 3, 23. Let's just remind you real quick. For all have sinned, everybody look, for all have what? Sin. And come short of what? Glory. When you sin, when he sinned, it fell short of what God crowned him with. Are y'all with me? So when Satan came in, what was his plan? Now think about this. God asked me this last time I preached this. I'm driving home from Iowa. And he said, what was his plan? He says, you know my plan, the glory. What was Satan's plan? And I said, well, Lord, steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not driving a semi, by the way. <laughs> I don't know what. 
steal, kill, and destroy. And all of a sudden it went, the glory. Oh, no, 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 no. Everybody look, listen. Adam was still alive when he left there, when he left the garden. When Satan left the garden, a lot of us are getting all caught up and he's going to try to still kill me and my family and my goods and this and that. And, and, and that's part of it. But his agenda is the same today as it was then. And when he slithered out of that garden, he slithered out victorious. Adam still lived 940 years. And they were still together. Satan didn't go out of there going, curses, it didn't work, he's still alive. Curses, they're still together. He was only after. And he's the same today. Oh, no, 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 I'm talking about Satan. And it's the truth. He's the same. It's not so much about you. He don't care if you live 120. Come on. That's right. Come on, stay with me now. He doesn't care. That's just collateral damage. What he's after is the glory. And that's the blessings. And that's the goodness of God. He doesn't want you shining. He doesn't want you arising. He doesn't want you affecting souls. Because that is what it's all about. That was the plan in the beginning. Are y'all with me? Okay. Everybody say the story of the glory. Don't you know that Satan laughed when there was no more glory? He had, he had done his plan. He's victorious. Man could no longer endure the glory that once he donned with his clothing. All right. So in the Old Testament, Moses had to hide and turn away from God. Why? Because he couldn't endure the glory. And that was the original plan. The presence of God. It's the same thing. The glory, Hebrew, everything heavy with the goodness of God. Everything. In the Old Testament, God's glory stood behind a thick curtain in the Holy of Holies. And the priest could only come in there once a year and he took great precautions. Why? Because it was the father of glory. Listen to me. The all-consuming fire. What does he consume? What does the glory consume? Sin. Man sinned and fell short of. Okay. So don't you remember when David brought the ark and he was told to do it God's way and he didn't do it that way, brought it on the cart, the oxen slipped, right? The man, uh, whatever his name is, Uzzah, Uzzah, whatever his name is, and he touches it, touches what? Kills him. In the same way as powerful And awesome as it is, it's powerful and can be destructive in the same way. God knows that. That's why he said go from degrees of glory. Come on. He's not giving it to you all at once. It would consume you. Are y'all with me? We're talking about what? The story of what? Okay. Now, and don't you think that Satan had won when he went out of there, out of that garden. But... Oh, what a planner. Oh, what a plan. God had a plan. And I call it Operation Glory. A plan which began before the foundations of the world. Listen to me. A plan that began before the foundation of the world. God didn't need to do anything. He had already done it. Are y'all with me? What had he done? Operation Glory. The plan was a mystery. Everybody say mystery. In the New Testament, God's plans are called mysteries. The New Testament translates it mysteries. And in the Companion Bible, you should really study and the Companion Bible. It's amazing. The Companion Bible translates mystery as a secret or something concealed that will be revealed. That's what mystery means. A secret that is concealed shall be revealed. If there was a sheet over this, you never saw a podium. And I went, ha ha, ta-da. Everybody say, ta-da. ta-da. I need you to stay awake. <laughs> and y'all went, oh, whoa, he can put his drink there. But now here's the thing. Before we did the ta-da, when the sheet was on it, it was already there. Yeah. It was always there. <laughs> so everything God has for you is all ready. We just need more. 
Y'all are good. Okay, here we go. All right, just testing. <laughs> so, God's plan is called a mystery. Everybody say mystery. That's what it says in the Bible. That's how Paul talks about it. And, and many prophets prophesied about it, wondering what and when they were talking about, the Old, Old Testament prophets. Then the gospel writers start writing about it. They didn't grasp the meaning of the mystery, not until Paul, it was revealed to Paul. And God reveals that secret that was concealed before the foundation of the earth to Paul. Here's how I like to show it to you to help, help you with it. God took Paul into that room that said top secret. And they went in there with their little flashlights and they pulled out the file. Here it is, Operation Glory. And he shows that to Paul. And Paul says it here. We're going to go quickly through these scriptures. Now watch, it was already done before the foundation of the earth. It was a mystery. You'll hear it in Paul's writings here. All right? But it's all about the glory. Man, if you can get this. We've been guarding stuff when you've been deceived and he's still in the glory. You protect the glory. You defend the glory. Amen. You go higher in the glory. Jude tells us how by praying in the Holy Spirit. Huh? All right, here we go. Romans 16, 25. Are y'all ready? Here we go. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. According to the revelation of the what? What's a mystery? It's God's plan. And it's a secret that is concealed that will be revealed, which was kept secret since when? The world began. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God. All right, now let's go to Ephesians 3, 9. Can you do it verse by verse instead of breaking them up? The whole verse? Maybe if you can't, that's fine. All right, are we there? Ephesians 3, 9. And to make all men see. How many men? All. How many? All. What does all mean? All. You know what the Greek word for all is? (laughs) We got some Greek scholars in here. Rick Renner is here. And to make... Does that mean you? Does that mean me? Yes. All. Men do what? What is the fellowship of the what? The plan of God. That was once concealed. But now... Revealed, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, this mystery, this plan, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, I think that's the end of that. I'm not for sure. There's a semicolon, but does that mean it goes to 10 or not? Okay. Now, 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 7. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect or mature, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a what? Mystery. We know what that is, right? God's plan. Even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained, when? For what purpose? When did he do it? For what purpose? When did he do it? For what purpose? Unto our glory. Now let's look at 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 7 in the Amplified. It makes it way clearer. It amplifies it, by the way. (laughs) Yet uh, Yet when we are among the full grown spiritually mature Christians who are ripe in understanding and we should be, amen? We do impart a higher wisdom, the knowledge of the divine plan. This is the plan previously hidden. This is the secret. It was previously hidden. He shows it to Paul. Paul has it. Paul writes about it. Here it is. What is it about, Paul? He showed it to me. We had flashlights. Okay, what is it? 
but is, is indeed not a wisdom of the present age or of the world, nor of the leaders and the rulers of this age, click, who are being brought to nothing and are doomed to pass away, click. But rather, what we are setting forth is a wisdom of God once hidden from the human understanding and now revealed to us by God. That wisdom, that plan, that mystery, which God devised and decreed before the ages for, what for? Our glorification, here it comes, to lift us into the glory of his presence. The plan, the father of glory, Paul, sent the Lord of glory to lift up the man who had once been crowned with glory, but had fallen from the glory back into the glory of his presence. The glorification, do you see that? The glorification process. Oh, man, are y'all getting this or not? That's the plan. Say, that's the plan. That's the, plan. that's the story of the glory. And if Satan would have known this, he would have never lifted God's spotless lamb to the altar of that cross where is innocent blood. And thank God for the blood that allows us access to the glory. So here's the whole point of the operation of glory. So wait, wait, wait. First of all, let's go to verse eight. Let's don't, let's don't finish this. None of the rulers of this age or world perceived and recognized and understood this for if they had. Now, well, look, watch, watch, watch this. I bet you've never seen this like this. They never would have crucified who? The Lord. Oh, no, no, no. Say it again. The Lord. It doesn't say Jesus. It calls him. The Lord. We never would have crucified the one who was holding the plan. I didn't care if Adam would have lived 10,000 years. I wouldn't have cared if he, all of this stuff, all I was after. And that's what he's after now. That you don't shine. That you don't arise. That you don't operate in faith and love. That you don't, come on now, because that's what affects the other. Amen? Amen? And the lost. They never would have crucified who? The Lord of glory. The Lord of glory. I'm going to say it one more time. And I think he said this to Paul. The father of glory. Here's the story in a nutshell. The father of glory sent the Lord of glory to lift up the man who once was crowned with glory. Right? Back into the glory. And we're called who? The glorious church. What do you think this is all about, people? The glory of God. Moses knew it. Show us your glory. Show us. That's what separates us. And if you leave us, don't leave us here. Or if you don't go with us, don't leave us here. Because it's your presence or your glory that separates us from everybody else in the world. Praise God. Amen. Is anybody getting anything out of it? Here's the whole point. Let's go to Colossians 1, 26 and, 20, uh, 1, 26 and 27. Even the mystery. All right, here we go, right? That's the plan. Which hath been hid, how long? From ages and from generations. But now, and we know what mystery means, right? It's the plan of God. But now is made manifest to his saints. Click. To whom God who make known what is the riches of the glory. Now, a while ago I was talking about he didn't care if he died and he didn't care if he was broke, this, that, that. But that's part of the riches of the glory. If he gets the glory, if the glory's not shining in your life, if you're not going from degree to degree to degree, you don't have to. You'll still go to heaven. You get to arise and shine. For thy light has come. For the gl- Come on. Come on. glory of the Lord shall be seen upon you. Oh, we are specially designed containers of this glory. And God brought it back so that the glorification process could come back. To whom God who made known what is the riches of his glory. That's the same thing as the blessing. 
It ties right into the blessing. It's called the goodness of God. Everything good. That's your health. That's finances, joy. It's peace. It's strength. It's everything. The riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's what it is. The confident expectation. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise God. Man. So can you imagine Satan's reaction when the very first man got born again? Because that's what it was all about, the glory. So when a person gets born again, the process of glorification begins and the process according to the plan. You don't stop there at salvation. You start there. It's the process of glorification. Get it, are, are y'all understand what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. We have preached this, and I'm not going to say wrong because there's truth to it. But we haven't taught it right. It's just the same thing as the get to, have to principle. You didn't have to get saved. You get to get saved. Was there benefits to getting saved? Hello, McFly. Listen, you don't have to tithe. If you're born again, you're going to heaven. But you don't have to tithe. Man, usually when I say that, and pastors are like... You and the windows of open shall be, the windows of heaven shall be open. There's the benefits to the getting to. You don't have to go to church. You get to go to church. See, we've been training our children. You have to. No, they get to. Explain it to them in that way, that coaching way. You see what I'm talking about? Other, other, the other way brings rebellion. You get to. Amen. So when a person gets born again, so we've been preaching and teaching it like this. When you get saved, get saved from hell. And you get saved from the devil. And you get saved. And there's truth. That's true. But you want to know the real story? You get saved into the glory. Oh. That's a Scooby snack if I ever had one. That wasn't a very good Scooby. That was kind of a horse. But anyway, are y'all with me? You get saved into the glory. All right, let's go to this verse. Second Corinthians 3, 18, amplify. And all of us as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the word of God. Oh, that's a good thing to do. As in a mirror, What? The glory of the Lord, click, are constantly being transfigured into his very own image in ever increasing splendor and from from one degree of glory to another degree of glory, he, he would have consumed, you would have been consumed in burnt toast if he gave you all the glory right there. He knows that. So we develop into it. You get born again. Ha ha. I'm a container. I get to shine. I get to arise. Degree means level. One translation grade. What grade are you in? Now I've made this joke and we've all laughed about it. Maybe not here, but other places. Just think about you at your age right now going into kindergarten. Now let's picture it. Now you got your letter, go to Walmart and get these supplies. Glue, do not eat it. (laughs) Crayons, 54, do not eat them. (laughs) Pencil sharpener, ruler, all these things. And you show up to school at your age. And that desk doesn't fit. And you're like, and it's very awkward. And the other kids are looking at you like, you're weird. You know, some of you can't even really follow along with me on that because it's just so silly. As silly as that is in the natural, it's happening in the spiritual. On what? My people perish. 
They don't know what it's all about. Satan's deceiving them. And they think it's this that he's after. And they think it's that that he's after. And they're spending their time and their efforts after that. Instead of arising. And the glory that I saved them back into. That's what salvation was all about. Saved from hell. That was a benefit. Salvation is all about into the glory. Back into God's original plan that he dawned man. Are y'all with me? That he once wore what not faded glory, glory. Okay, that just worked for a few people. Note to self, not in Fort Worth, that joke. Faded glory is an old gene company. Okay. Amen. Are y'all okay? Are y'all getting anything? Okay. We're in the last days and it's time for us to be the church. Be what church? The glorious church that allows God's glory to be manifested in a greater degree than ever before. Walk the streets with our faces shining. Amen. And men and women, souls get saved when they see it. There's something about you. We are commanded, Isaiah 59, 21. I'm going to talk about, now listen, I'm going to go into part two of this on the next service if you want to stick around. Uh, For as me, this is my covenant, with them saith the Lord. Who's speaking? And he's talking about covenant. There's three groups of people in the Bible. The Jews, the nations, and the church. Does this sound like Billy Brim? (laughs) Two of the three God has a covenant with. What group are we in? The church. Okay. He has a covenant with who else besides the church? The Jews. So he's talking covenant. So you can take this Old Testament writing and it's a parallel meaning to everybody he's in covenant with. Are y'all with me? He's speaking covenant. He doesn't separate. I mean, covenant. And at the end of it, it says forever. All the seeds and all the generations, everybody I'm in covenant with forever. What does he say? This is my covenant. Woo, son. When God starts speaking covenant. My spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth, click, shall not depart out of thy mouth nor out of the mouth of thy seed, your children or your children's children, saith the Lord. Click. From henceforth and forever. Everybody say forever. Forever. I was preaching at Margaret Court's church. I don't know if you know her. She was one of three Wimbledons and more uh, Grand Slam tennis tournaments than anybody in the world ever in the history of men, women, in the history of tennis. She got a great church in Australia, about three to 5,000 people. And and I got to this part and I said, forever. I said, say forever. And so they're Australian, right? And so they said what? Oh, you, okay. They're Australian. (laughs) So they said, forever. (laughs) And it sounded so cool. (laughs) 5,000 people saying forever. (laughs) I said, say it again. I just wanted to hear it for myself. (laughs) Wasn't anything spiritual to it. (laughs) Forever. I said, say forever and ever. Forever and ever. They thought I was really going somewhere with it. I said, say it like me. And they all went, forever. (laughs) So he, (laughs) if you don't like this, just call (laughs) billybrim.org. Just go Billy. Okay. From henceforth and forever. All right. Now watch this because the original text was not written in chapters and verses. So what's the very next thing he said about the covenant? This is my covenant. What covenant? This is my... Arise. That's a command word. You're going to learn Hebrew next service. I'm going to teach you something that the rabbis were moved by God that that went to mom. Mom came to me and they said, you've got to teach your people this word. They don't know this word. And now I've taught it before. But I never knew the connection with the glory with it. Everywhere. And it's a command word. That means it, it's the difference between life and death. If you don't do it, what are the options? Wow. Not that he wants you to die. A commander, when he gives a command, it's to help you live in the army. But if you sit there and go, I ain't done that. I'm going to stay right in my bunk and do whatever. And the war's going on. You've got a high possibility of dying. 
right? right? Arise and shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. The Lord said to me one time, upon who? And I said, me. He said, not necessarily. Now, that's a good confession, and, that, and that it was designed to be that way. But do you know what he meant? Upon who? I said, me. He goes, depend upon those who arise. Amen. I remember we did a meeting in New York City, and it was Holy Ghost. Miracles happened. Legs grew out. All kinds of things happened. And we got into this restaurant that they, you had to go on a list for three months to get into. And they were so excited about getting us into. We went in and we're talking about the meeting. Ah, 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 ah. This lady comes over to our table. Hustle, bustle, everybody. It was the most crowded, most popular one in New York City. And this lady goes, I don't know who y'all are. The waiters are trying to move her. I don't know who y'all are. But the glory of the Lord is all. She went to her knees. We stood up. We just started praying in tongues and thanking Jesus. Oh, the glory. We're containers for the glory. You were saved for the glory. Come on. To arise and shine. Oh, and you're going to learn what that means. And it's the difference between life and death. And some people in here, you feel as healthy as a horse. And you have no clue that life and death are hanging in the balance because of your arising. Not because God's going to kill you. No, it has nothing to do with that. Is everybody all right? Isaiah prophesied about this. What time? Give me now. Five minutes, two, one. I know, I know. And I know that's a nice thing to say. I'll, I'll go. I'll try to go like 10. All right, here we go. Isaiah prophesied about it. Because, I mean, he's pressured the whole church. Huh? 15. That's what y'all didn't see. <laughs> I'm teasing. He didn't do that. 15. <clears throat> okay. All right. Isaiah 6, 1 through 3. Oh, yeah. Isaiah 6, 1 through 3. 6. Maybe I didn't give it to him. Okay. But that's where Isaiah said <laughs> that he saw and prophesied that he saw the whole earth filled with the glory. Is that, you got close. You got really close. I think it's three. Oh, one through three. I'm sorry. You're right. Thank you. In the year that, that there he is again died, I saw also, <laughs> he's showing up everywhere. Also, the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Click. Above it stood the, the seraphims. So, so each one had six wings, and tw two of them, Twain, two, Mark Twain was evidently there. So two of his wings, he covered his face, and with two of them, his feet. So he saw this, and with two, he, I just don't want to say Twain, and two, he, he flew with the other two wings. This is what he saw. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the Lord of all armies. And the whole earth is full of his glory. Glory is what you're saved into. Salvation is not just what you're saved from, but into. Let's go to Hebrews 2, 9 through 10, New Living Translation, and we'll wrap this thing up. Why everything is made. And why we're saved into. What we do see is Jesus who was given a position a little lower than the angels. And because he suffered death for us. Oh, oh, oh aren't you glad? Yes. Man, I'm so glad I got that revelation from my pastor Keith Moore. When I was uh, under him. About the, the fear of death. If you don't have, you need to get online and get his about the fear of death. That we, he has given us the victory. And, and that's the reason why Paul could say uh, to live is Christ. But to die is gain. There's so many people afraid of dying. You're not free. You're not free to live until you're, come on now, yeah. not afraid to die. That's right. and, and the thing about it is we don't have to die. He tasted death. Yeah. I'm not going to die. You want to know why I'm not afraid to die? Because I'm not. Come on. Come on. That's right. 
I'm going to move. Have you ever moved before? Yes. That's where you find out who your friends are. <laughs> well, that's going to be a great move and you won't need your friends. Okay. Jesus, he is now crowned with glory and honor. Yes. By God's grace, Jesus tasted death for who? Yeah. Everyone. Thank you, Jesus. God for whom and through whom everything was made. Y'all getting this? For whom and through whom everything was made chose to bring many children into what? Into the glory of God. It's the story of the glory. First Peter one, seven through nine. And we're going to close with this and then we're going to pick it up next service. If you want to be here, if not get the tape that the trial of your faith being much more precious then of gold that perished, though it be tried with fire, might be found into praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, and whom thou now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with what? Joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Y'all remember that one? Yeah. It's joy unspeakable and Oh, the rest of you, it's not that hard to pick up. <laughs> Unspeakable. Never. What did you just sing? What was that last part? Oh, y'all aren't getting this, are you? It has been told. We sang that for years. And the half has never... Maybe one day, <laughs> yet been told. Are y'all with me? Yeah. It was revealed to Paul. Yeah. Called Operation Glory. Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Lord, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's trying to steal my glory. He's trying, oh, that something offense comes up. Ha, 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 he's trying to get me to decrease my glory. That's the power. That's the riches. That's the blessings. That's the presence of God. That's what will get my family saved. That's what will get my friends saved. That will change my community. It will change my town, my state, my country. As long as I, I get to shine. I don't have to. I get to. I don't have to die. I get to live. Amen. Lord, we thank you. Are you thankful for what you heard today? I said, Mama, I'm going to Jerry Savelle's church, Pastor Justin's church. I'm going there and going to preach the glory. And she knew that, Pat, you know, she knew for years that Jerry has gotten that revelation. She goes, oh, good. <laughs> I know, but it's, they've got, show us the glory on the wall. She goes, that's the best kind. She goes, Brother Hagin used to tell me, when ministers come in, it should dovetail with what is already being shown by God. Amen? So how many know God had his way today? Now that was a simple coaching way of you to know I'm in this story. I'm a part of this. People's lives are on balance on hanging on whether I shine or not. Amen. That's what Satan's after. Okay. All right. I'll end it. Lord, thank you for the word. Everybody stand up and then I'll give it to pastor. Thank you for this word. Just lift up your hands right now and just thank him for the glory. Thank you, Lord. Oh God. Just in your own way. Don't do just in your own way. Thank you for saving me into the glory. <laughs> Woo. You know what else? You don't have to repent. Are y'all hearing me? This is a minister. You do not have to repent. You get to repent. Woo! Woo! You get to. See, so many people look at it as, no, God, I repent. I repent for my slothfulness. I repent for my laziness or whatever. Lord, I repent. And here we go. Amen. And we are the glorious church. I tried to get mom when I took over a senior pastor of mom's church. Mom's church is called a glorious church, not the glorious church. The only one. 
a glorious church. The Lord told her in 1973, I want to come in and rename it Champion Church. It's more new, edgy, trendy. Are you with me? But that's not going to separate you. Are you with me? Your church name. These things are all good. But then this revelation came and I called mama and I said, mama, thank God our church is named a glorious church. I was so happy for it. But anyway, but so now it's a glorious church where we train champions for Christ. Did y'all get anything today? Thank you for your time. Thank you for pulling. And I'm going to pick it up on the second one. If you can be here and not be here. Pastor, come on up.